What is up everyone? We are back at the Motivation Station. And today I have a post for you guys continuing on the deleted posts from the Neville subreddit. And this one is called SP Success Story. So here it goes. First and foremost, don't ever doubt that the law doesn't work. It does. It always has and always will, even if you were not aware of it. My first post on this subreddit was about my inadvertent success stories before fully knowing about Neville and the law. In that post, I had mentioned that my SP wanted to break up because he was moving away to another city and he didn't believe that long distance would work. I stated that I would consciously use Neville's techniques in my life and I did exactly that. I used sats to imagine two scenes that I would alternate between at night. The first involved me admiring my engagement ring and thanking him for picking out such a beautiful ring. The second imaginal scene involved me posting a success story to this subreddit. LOL, funny how that works. It's important to note that I have a very specific way of doing sats, and I'll write it below for anyone who is interested. One, so this is cool because they are sharing their exact way that they use to attract their SP. I lie on my back and close my eyes with my hand on my side. Two, I let my body fall asleep and I ensure that my mind is semi awake. Three, when your mind is semi awake, you can kind of control your thoughts, but at the same time, it's a bit harder to pay attention. For me, this is the perfect time between wakefulness and sleep. Four, I repeat my imaginal scene a few times. Sometimes I have to start over because I get distracted or sometimes I get too sleepy and I forget to continue. I usually bring myself back though and repeat the scene. That, as, as that, that I can confirm that happens to me as well. I think that happens to everyone. Five, eventually I'll fall asleep. Six, people sometimes say they wake up feeling like their desire is fulfilled. That's never been the case for me. Rather, I wake up not thinking about my desire and I remember later on during the day. I eventually stopped doing sats after a week or two because I no longer felt like I had to anymore. Deep down inside, I knew that my SP and I were going to be together no matter what. This brings me to my second point, mental diet. I tried my absolute hardest to not let my external reality affect me. Sometimes it was hard, but more often than not, I persisted in the assumption that my SP and I were meant to be together no matter what. It was like a fact to me. My SP and I broke up a week ago because he was leaving for his new city. Was I upset? Yes. Did I let it affect me for longer than necessary? No. A day after we broke up, I was back to my normal self and I did things like how I would have. I went to the gym to work out. I focused on doing things that I enjoyed. I did have moments of sadness, but I acknowledged them and comforted myself with the thought that things would be all right. There was no point in stressing over what I knew to be true. It was only a matter of time before it manifested in my reality. Over the last few days, I saw a bridge of events unfolding. First, one of my closest friends messaged me to ask how I was doing after the breakup. We had a nice conversation and before he hung up, he said, I'm glad you're not too upset. I know things are going to work out. Trust me. He's not the type of person to say these things. So I found it a bit odd. I wondered if my SP reached out to my friend and discussed things with him. I decided not to dwell on this and let it go. Yesterday, my SP's best friend called to talk. I'm very close to him. So it wasn't odd. He also wanted to know how I was doing. He was surprised to hear that I was doing well and he mentioned a few times that my SP was taking it pretty hard even though he was the one who initiated the breakup. I wasn't surprised to hear this even though it was unexpected, I just knew that it would be the case. This morning I woke up to a text message from my SP saying that he wasn't doing great after the breakup and that he wanted to talk. I agreed to talk to him and he said that he loved me, missed me and he made a huge mistake. He cried and said he wanted his favorite person back. 
And yes, my SP did talk to my friend right before he called me, hence why my friend said what he said. My SP also asked his best friend to call me and ask how I was doing. I would really like to emphasize that I was doing sats before my SP and I broke up. I was doing sats when we were still together, but he broke up with me regardless. I did not let my exter external reality affect me. I knew deep down inside, no matter what, what happened, I would be with him. This was part of the journey and I was letting my life, was letting life guide me. My sad scene shows us being together. It shows the end. I didn't try and control the journey or every single twist and turn. There's no point. When you know and persist in the assumption, it is not necessary. Just know that anything is possible with Neville and the law as long as you apply the techniques, sats plus mental diet, properly. With that, I would like to say one thing before I end the post. Don't try and manifest an SP if you're coming from a place of lack and you're not happy with yourself. Whether or not you realize it, those subconscious beliefs will manifest and prevent you from manifesting your SP. Work on yourself first and then determine if you truly wanted that person or if it was because you were insecure or because of some other underlying issue. I think this post is great. I firmly agree with everything in here. I like how they illustrate the way that they went to the gym. They focus on things they enjoy. They had moments of sadness, but they acknowledge them and comfort in themselves with the thought that things would be all right. And that confidence and no point in stressing out over what they knew to be true. And that's much like what Dylan James talks about. I posted a video about his practice I guess you could call it the way that he handles things when things when he feels like himself he is manifesting or he needs to stabilize himself he writes out his daily routine he plans his entire day i've been doing much the same lately i use a time chunking uh <laughs> practice i don't know what you want to call it i use a time chunking in my journal for the day and basically what that is, I have my day divided up into three separate blocks. I find that scheduling the time of everything is to the hour or to the minute or whatever, like a lot of people talk about is too overwhelming and you always end up not doing things at the exact planned time. And so then you get discouraged and then you like throw the whole list out the window. So for me, I have a block from seven to one, I have another block from one to seven, and then I have another additional seven to one block, 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. And so I find that dividing my day up into these three chunks really gives me, if I say, okay, within this time block, I'm getting this, 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 this done. Here, this is what I'm doing for this one. And then in the evening, we're winding down, but I'm doing this, self-care, whatever it is. It's much easier for me to follow and I can check the boxes off. It, it's a really motivating uh, wave that I found that works for me personally. And I can share that if there's any interest in that. Um, a detailed explanation of how I go about blocking the time but I really do think that this is very easily doable. Anybody can do this. Anybody can follow these steps. They've outlined steps one through six. And I like how they explain that letting your body fall asleep. That is relaxation. When we talked about before that relaxation is a prerequisite to manifesting. And Dylan James has that succinct line that I like that it is simply the disciplining of your awareness. And, and relaxing, that is what we are doing here when we do this. Yes, are there, uh, whatever, counter examples to this? I'm not gonna sit here and debate about, yes, this person was in a stressed out state and they were still able to manifest or they were angry. What generally works as a general rule of thumb, you wanna be relaxed because that is where you allow the thoughts to come to you. You allow yourself to have that peaceful visualization. You allow the relaxation allows this door open into the subconscious or the superconscious or the source or infinite to the all, whatever you want to call it, whatever language, everybody, all these people, Napoleon Hill calls it, uh, what does he call it? The ether or the, uh, There's just so many different words for it. So anyways, guys, if you found this helpful, if you think that this technique is helpful, 
If anybody has any experience with it, drop me a comment down below. Drop the video a like. Let me know your thoughts about this. I'd be really curious to know any of anybody else's uh, success. Do you agree? Do you think that this falling asleep, this practice, imagining the scene and going to sleep at night, has it worked for you? I want to know below. Let me know. And hit the subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you guys soon.